I'm going to hand color my photo and partially paint uh, my photo that I call Cardiff Dream 2. So I'm going to first paint in a nice color gradient in the sky, sunset gradient, with opaque oils. And then go to like a translucent form of oil paint when I approach the horizon and color the rest of the image with uh, acrylic glazes, transparent acrylics. So first I'm mixing my first color here, which is a lot of white, a little bit of ultramarine blue. Mix in some linseed oil, some liquid to make it dry faster, and the linseed oil to make it, make it a little bit more liquid to add that first color to the sky. So, so that's going at the very top. So it's like a two-inch brush that I use here. The brush was pretty soft, so that's why I added that linseed oil to make the oil a little bit more liquid, so I could brush it on more easily. And this was a this this, this photo has sold already. It was an order, uh, so I kind of wanted to dry a little faster than normal, and that's why I added uh, the liquid which makes it dry a little faster. Later when I approach the horizon, as you will see, I will uh, use a lot more liquid to make it m more translucent. So now I'm going to add the next layer of blue I'm going to make it a little lighter, so there's more white now. And again, a little bit of linseed oil. So this was printed with my Epson P20,000. It's a 64 inch wide printer. So I can print pretty big with it. This is a 6 by 4 foot piece. So at the shortest here, this is 48 inches. And I can go up to like 56 inches if I want to stretch it on, on canvas. Because I, I need a little bit of canvas to go uh, around the sides and the back. So I used only black and gray inks to print this. And that allows me to add colors to it uh, by hand. So I'm also blending in that second layer of blue with the previous layer. So we, so we get a nice uh, gradient. So I didn't show the mixing, but this is another uh, even lighter um, color of blue. So there were like three layers of a light blue. And then now it's time to start adding m more of a sunset color. So I'm mixing a little bit of orange here with cadmium red and lemon yellow. And I'm actually will pick up a little bit of that color and mix it into the mix that I had earlier, which will make it a little bit of a of an aqua-ish, aqua aquamarine-ish color. Very light. As you can see here. If you Add in too much of that orange into the blue, you will get more of a of a brown, which I want to avoid. So 
and then I also use like only like half an inch of a brush because I want this little transition going to more orange to be very thin, very narrow. And I'm also blending that back in with the previous color. So now we get a nice gradient going from like an ultramarine blue on the top, relatively light, towards like an orange looking sky. Later I also will add that same ultramarine to the ocean. However, as I mentioned, uh, I'm going to do that with acrylics. I get the nicer uh, transparent blue when I do that with acrylics. Because, because liquid has a little bit of a orangey brown tint to it. Okay, so now it's time for a more saturated orange. Again, still I'm adding that into the previous mix. Still have enough paint left. That's not that much blue anymore, so this will this will be fine. So unfortunately, I forgot to turn on my camera when I added this layer, and you will see it's already there. And what I will be adding is actually the, the next layer of orange, a little bit of a lighter pinkish orange to um, the sky. See, and that's what you see there. That's the previous layer of a, of a lighter orange, and now I'm adding that more pinkish. Uh, orangey color. This is still opaque, only using a little bit of liquid, so I have to be careful and go around the trees, the palm trees that you see there. So that's one of the reasons I I, I'm, I will go more transparent, is that I, I don't have to go really careful around the trees and the hills in the back. That would take a lot of work. It's a little bit of a trick to go into a, a more much more translucent oil so you can actually go over the objects in the background there and they will of course then also get that orangey tint of course with that palm tree that's sticking out there i still have to be careful and go around it very carefully so I'm working on my next mix of colors here again it's a, a little bit more lighter than the previous color and that color I will add a little bit of that into this blob of uh, liquid which will make it very transparent because we are approaching the horizon now you don't want to take too much not all of that color that you see there on the on the previous palette you just need a little bit to uh, keep it transparent and this was just enough And then I'm blending that also with the previous layer of color. And you will see you get a very nice transition going from opaque oils to translucent oils without um, taking too much time painting towards the horizon. See, now I can just go over the objects, the trees and hills in the background. Plus, that faraway background will also get a nice sunset tint. So here I'm blending in carefully. It's oil so that previous layer is still wet. And we'll blend in nicely with this more translucent mix of paint.
and I will include a little bit of those trees and houses that are on the background. So this is a view from Suomi's in Encinitas, California, looking south. So the beach, like in the foreground, is actually Suomi's beach, and then further in the background, where that lifeguard tower is, that's San Aleo State Beach. That's Tower 19, one of the permanent lifeguard towers. This is my horizontal version of this view of Cardiff by the Sea. I also have a, a, a vertical one, which actually I have painted before also with uh, oils. Now it's time to color the bluffs, and I'm doing that with, I'm, I'm switching to acrylics now. So this is golden acrylic medium, and I'm mixing in some burnt sienna and some orange, cadmium orange, to get more of a like sunsetty brown, orangey brown for the bluffs. Like this was close to sunset, and the sun is to the right of us here. I will also go a little bit over the vegetation, which it looks dark here. And actually when I add some green later, it will be more of a desaturated green. Adding some of that color to the rocks at the bottom of the bluffs, which are put there to protect the bluffs from the ocean at high tide. Under normal conditions, like n not during a sunset, I mean, I like to just add pure burnt sienna uh, to the bluffs. And here I'm adding a little bit more orange also uh, to the bluffs uh, to get more of that sunset feel. Time for the next color. Again, mix it in with acrylic medium. This is again burnt sienna. And this time I'm, I will add a little bit of red, cadmium red to it. And this is going to be the, the color of the beach. I have to go carefully around the tower. The tower is going to get a, like a thalo blue later, very light. And this like, separates also the, the, the color of the beach from the bluffs. There's two different colors here now. So we have a more orangey burnt sienna for the bluffs and a more reddish burnt sienna for the beach. So I'll stay away from that, from the wet sand that you can see, the very shiny part. Later I will add also blue to that, but very light. Sometimes I actually, when I color this image or the other color of dream, I leave that untouched because I also like 
uh, like the silvery look of it. When you leave that untouched, it almost looks like silver, which is, uh, of course, from the untouched black and white photo. I'm also adding a little bit of paint to the side of the canvas. It's about one and a half inches thick, the canvas, uh, the stretcher bars that I stretch this canvas on. It's, gonna, it's going to get uh, a palm wood floater frame later, and I'll leave a little bit of a gap so you can still see the sides. So when, it, when you're fast enough, that uh, acrylic medium stays wet for a little bit, so I can still now remove some of the color of the people on the beach with uh, a Q-tip, a cotton swab. And now it's time to mix a little bit of green into the acrylic medium to color the vegetation on the bluff and some of the palm trees in the back. I believe in the original photo there was not that much green that far on not that much green that far on the back but uh, I, I like that contrast that color of green contrasting with the reds and the with the oranges and the burnt sienna so I, I still like to add that green towards the back and that's the nice thing about hand coloring. Of course, you can color it any way you like. I could have colored it purple for all I care, but I want to stay a little bit realistic here, um, not go too crazy. Also, I did shoot this at a sunset, but I could have shot it at, say, midday and then still color it as a sunset. You can do that on your hand color. So it's nice to add a little bit of variation to a particular color. So I'm adding a little bit of yellow in here. And I'm especially using that for in the foreground for the for the leaves of the palm tree that are on the very front. So there's a little bit of variation in the greens that we have now in the image. So we are approaching the finished piece now. The only thing left to do is adding that ultramarine to the to the water, including the the wet sand. And I will also add a little bit of that that greenish that yellow green uh, to some of the plants on the on the bluffs. So there's uh, also a little bit more variation of that green on the bluffs. I, I, did, I did not show that here though. Okay, so my last color. So this is ultramarine again. Of course, now acrylic. Previously it was oil. But of course I look the same. At least very close. And first I mixed in, but I, I used less paint. So this is a very translucent ultramarine, which I'm adding to the back here and also to the wet sand towards the left. And then later I will add a little bit more of that paint into the mix, make it a little more saturated and color the rest of the water with that more saturated ultramarine. I want to be careful um, when I approach the breaking waves. I, I want to keep those white. So I'm going carefully around those.
And here's that wet sand that I was talking about earlier, which sometimes I leave untouched. But I also like it when I have this much lighter version of this ultramarine added here. I have to be a little bit careful when I go next to the sand. I don't want to pick up, so it's still a little bit wet, the beach, and I don't want to pick up that burnt sienna from the beach and getting it on my brush here. And this is a very nice contrast uh, between this wet sand, the, the water, and and the beach colors. And now I added uh, a, a tad more of that ultramarine paint to the mix. So it's a little darker, a little more saturated. And now I'm going to finish the water with that color. It's a big surface to do. This time I decided to lay flat my photo. Last time when I did a large one like this, some blobs of paint fell down and got on the on the canvas lower, which I then had to fix later. Of that's also my fault, I just put too much paint on the brush, which I could have avoided. You can see it's nice to have these two different values of blue in the water. And there's this nice, I love that breaking wave, that big one that's right there where I'm at now going carefully around it with my brush and I want to keep that white. That wave really, uh, I think, adds to the photo. If that was like an empty spot, it would have looked a lot different. And I want to keep it white, so going around it very carefully. And then when I approach the bottom of the photo here, I'm adding on that paint a little thicker still. So we still have a nice, more or less, atmospheric gradient of color going from the background all the way to the foreground. And the last thing to do is to add a tad of color, in this case phthalo blue, to that lifeguard tower. Lifeguard tower number 19. So I only need very little of this acrylic medium. And only like, like a smidgen of that phthalo blue, because it's a strong color, stro stronger than ultramarine. If you overdo it, then this tower would be bright blue, which I don't want to. I think this is the perfect color for this tower. And that's the last thing to do. Now I just need to frame it. And it's all finished. A six by four foot version of Card of Dream 2, partially painted, partially colored with oils and acrylics. And I hope you liked the video and I will see you next time.